Welcome to ProPractice, your guide to piano mastery. I'm Josh Wright, and today's tutorial is based on the Sonata number 21 in C major, opus 53, by Beethoven, second movement. This is the introduzione to the third movement, so it's a very short, concise movement, 28 bars, and it has this attacca subito il rando at the end, so it's, it's you're left hanging at the end. before you, you start the beautiful rondo. Originally, Beethoven had written a much longer second movement, later published as Andante Favori. Uh, wonderful piece uh, that I enjoyed listening to, but that piece has a lot of charm and wit and playfulness in it. And I think this introduction does a lot to diffuse the tension that we just saw previous to this. Let's see. From all of... It's much more slow and contemplative, and it diffuses tension in a way that I think is completely brilliant. I was texting with a friend a few months ago, and I wanted to read what he said. He's going to present a Beethoven tutorial in another year or two, he said on this channel. I said, will you come to a tutorial? Um, and he said, give me a year or two. I want to make sure it's ready. And I said, okay, sounds great. And I was just telling him a few months ago that I was working on this, and he said the following. He said, it's interesting how little love the second movement gets, probably because it's so small and quote-unquote insignificant, but it really is a genius bridge between the outer movements. And I said, what are your favorite elements of that? And he said, it's a lot of little things, how the movements connect to each other. The first movement ends so triumphantly in C major, full chords at a distance to occupy so much sound. Then the second movement enters with a single pianissimo octave on the subdominant, a key that greatly releases the tension of the first movement. The whole movement has this sense of trying to make its way upward from the depths. It keeps getting pulled back down, then tries to rise above again and again, until finally moving Ataka Subito to the third movement with the crossover to that first liberating high G that starts a flight of fancy. I thought that was really eloquently written, just especially for an exchange between friends. He said, harmonically, it's interesting, but also a simple progression from subdominant to dominant, resolving into the C major tonic of the third movement, and being short and quite sparse keeps it as a bridge between the grandeur of the outer movements. I couldn't have said that better myself. It's, he put that so well. The reason I wanted to start with that, first of all, I think it was beautifully written and shows a lot of insight, but that last point that he made of this is a diffusion of the grandeur between movements. Yes, there's moments of angst in this movement. Um, we see a lot of that down in bar 24, well, building up to bar 24, but we... We finally get the G. We see a lot of dissonance building up, a lot of intense harmonic chords, but we also see so much dissipation of tension. And peacefulness. Beethoven will trick us with a few little sforzandos, crescendos, and then just dissipating. So it's not a movement of stasis. Things are still moving around, but overall it has a feeling of peace, of calm, of patience. And I wanted to start today's tutorial with those thoughts in mind. Now let's get started. We're going to be going over a lot of things. I wanted to say a big thank you to Susan Duhlmeyer, who I played this for twice over the last five or six months, uh, first 
time was right after I learned it, and then I played it once before a recent concert I gave. And she really helped to instill a lot of wisdom and ideas that really helped me in this movement. So big thanks to Susan. Let's start out here. We're in 6-8 time, the key of F major, lone, low, octave F. Be patient with that, nice and deep. And a little more. And then he diffuses. I personally like to do it like that. I've heard others do just a diminuendo. I like it to start very soft. Change your pedal so that you hear that rest. You don't want to be holding this through here. Part of the effect and magic of this movement is are the rests. There are so many rests, and we want to hear those silences. It brings a breathlessness to the expansiveness. It, it juxtaposed on top of each other, that's a very special effect. So as you... Breath. Round the pedal off, but make sure that silence holds its full value. And then four, five, six. You can round the pedal. Again, you don't need to, you know, lift upwards quickly, but one, sorry, four, five, six. And then we stay on this E minor. So we were in E major, and then we go to E minor, excuse me. Stay on the E is what I meant to say. And then we go to minor. F sharp seven with an E pedal. And then resolving to B major. And it's, it's just F sharp. I shouldn't have said F sharp. Well, actually, it is F sharp seven if you count the E. That's more like a, a dominant pedal. I've, or, uh, an E pedal underneath there. And then he resolves because he does the same thing. And then he intensifies the harmony and then resolves. And then he switches to minor mode, keeps this E down here, morphs into F sharp seven, and then he resolves it again. And then he chromatically moves down from D sharp to D natural to D flat. And then we finally hear the dominant. The dominant's usually a place of great harmonic tension. And I do think it still is harmonically tense there, especially because we're growing. He, he'd written that, but it almost feels like a relief at that point because we just got all this chromaticism. He comes down, D minor, F major. Okay, so let's go through that with some actual musicality here. So here we go, one more time. I like to get a little more intense here. And I like these to die away, kind of evaporate, and then we don't know where we're at, where we're going. A little more again. Off. Off. This time a little bigger. Crescendo. Arrive, Sforzando, and then a little diminuendo down to there, two, three. So right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Four, five, six, one. I've debated a lot about pedaling in there, so you could do pedal off, down off, to round these off. So you, you can 
put the pedal down so you can round the left hand off, go back down on the pedal and then round that off. But as I've experimented more, I kind of like it dry. You have to make sure you lift all the keys at the exact same time and also you can't be flippant about it. It is very rounded still in the hand motion, but then the pedal has a greater effect when we get there. And hold full value here, maybe a little extra. One, two, three, four, five. And then you have an option to release the pedal to there or just change it or just release it, excuse me, off. So you can be rounding it is what I'm trying to say to there, or you can just hold it all the way and then off quickly. That's a personal preference thing. I personally would probably just hold it and then quickly come off there. One other detail that Susan taught me that I loved 